So now we're finally ready to consider how a vaccine protects us from the coronavirus. And we know that a vaccine stimulates our bodies to produce this protein, which is the antibody protein. And in particular, an antibody protein, which is specific for an epitope from the spike protein that's on the surface of the, of the coronavirus. So we're going to now look at a, at a landscape by David Goodsell, which illustrates what's happening when this antibody finds a coronavirus with a spike protein epitope. So to do that, we'll look at this poster. This is called Flu Fight. So this is actually created to explain how the influenza virus infects us. But again, you know that the coronavirus and the influenza virus are very, very similar in terms of their infection mechanism. So we're going to pretend that, uh, that this poster is talking about coronavirus. So do you remember that scenario that we, uh, we described uh, in a previous video in which you walk into an elevator where someone with a coronavirus infection has just sneezed and you take a breath and you breathe in and some virus particles that are floating around in the air? And you might think that those virus particles, you know, it's into your your lung, your upper respiratory system. And they just settle right down onto the surface of a of one of the cells the, that line your respiratory epithelium. But that's not quite the case. So right here we have a schematic drawing of what happens when you inhale some virus. So up here there are some virus particles. This is the respiratory epithelial cell that the virus is trying to infect them. But the virus doesn't just go right down here on the surface and start the infection process. First thing you have to realize is that there's this thick sort of yellow colored material here which is called the epithelial mucosa. So this is a mucus that lines that surface of your lungs. There's a specialized cell type there called a goblet cell. And the purpose of, a, of the goblet cell is simply to make mucin, a protein, and release that mucin into this extracellular space here. And we'll, we'll see a picture, a drawing, a, an illustration of what this mucin protein looks like in just a bit. The other remarkable feature of a respiratory epithelial cell, though, is that it has these long projections called cilia. And these things actually move. So these things constantly beat in one direction. So they're constantly moving this mucus up out of your respiratory system, higher and higher, so that viruses, which get trapped in this mucosal layer, get moved up, up out of your lungs, so that when you blow your nose, throw that Kleenex away, you're throwing away all those viruses that you inhaled a few minutes ago. And if you don't blow them out your nose, you'll swallow them. And when you swallow them, as disgusting as that may sound, we know that they're going to soon encounter a very, very low pH in your stomach where the viruses won't survive uh, transit through the stomach. So that's the first sort of defense that our bodies have evolved to, to allow us to walk around in this world filled with viruses and bacteria, pathogens of various sorts. So this is a mechanism that we don't think about too much, but this is the first layer of defense. All right, but, um, but, but we want to talk about antibodies now and how the vaccine has produced some antibodies which are now going to seek out an epitope on the coronavirus and inactivate the virus. So right here we have a, a virus which is trapped in the mucosal layer and David has illustrated that in this large panel here. So let's take a look at this. All right, here we have actually a flu virus, but again, we're gonna assume that this is a coronavirus. And we're gonna assume that these purple proteins on the surface of this virus are is the spike protein. And one of the first things you see, you see all this yellow color. And if you look carefully, there's this long fibrous protein here and this is mucin. This is the protein that's created by these goblet cells and released to make up this uh, mucosal layer. But the other thing you see then are these yellow antibody proteins. You know they're antibodies because they're this 
this three lobed structure. Every time David shows you an antibody, he'll orient the antibody so that you see the three lobes. Okay? And, um, and you see there's some interaction between the mucin protein and these antibodies. But most importantly, when you look here, this antibody here is binding to this spike protein here. And this antibody, these, this, these two antibody, two antigen binding domains of this antibody, are binding to two different spike proteins here. So all over this virus, you have antibodies that are now binding to the spike protein. That, that bound antibody is now connected to this mucin protein. So this virus is effectively trapped in the mucus layer. It's going to be swept out of the lungs. The infection will never happen. So that's why we need a vaccine. We need a vaccine to make these antibodies, uh, which will prevent that virus from getting anywhere close to the surface of the cell so that the infection can't happen. Even if, it, even if this virus uh, somehow found itself to the surface of the cell, maybe the, a person is not creating enough mucus here so it, it gets down here. It is likely, it is hoped, that there will be enough antibodies coding this virus that it won't even be able to interact with the ACE2 protein that it's looking for in the surface of the cell. That's what happens in a person who has been vaccinated and has created their own endogenous antibodies that carry out this surveillance for viruses with a spike protein and prevent it from getting close to you. If you've been infected previously with coronavirus and you survived that infection, then that's the other way you will have antibodies like this that will protect you hopefully into the future. The real question right now is how long that protection is good for. And different viruses elicit different antibodies which appear to remain in your circulation uh, longer than, than other viruses. So it's not yet clear how long that protection will last. Hi there, Mark here, a colleague of Dr. Tim Hermans. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other coronavirus resources available at www.3dmoleculardesigns.com slash scienceofcoronaviruses.htm, including a paper modeling activity where you can create your own physical model of a coronavirus. We hope you enjoy, and thanks.